Hello, Jacqueline. How are you doing? Doing great. Yeah. Good to see you again. Good to see you. So we're talking energy model today and you've brought some new friends. I have some wonderful new friends. Andy and Joe are going to show me the energy model of my house today. Awesome. So Andy, let's start with you. Yes, uh, energy model, um, when we talk to homeowners, sometimes they think it's a 3D rendering of how the kitchen's going to look or how the exterior of the home is going to look. But specifically with, with the software that we use is called Remrate. It's an energy modeling software and it's looking at data. And we can print various reports from Remrate showing specific changes to the building and their impact on the energy bill for the homeowner. They can make informed decisions on the information they use going forward. So just to be clear, it's not a 3D model. How then does this software, how does the energy model then help Jacqueline and Kevin? So we can, we can use the software to change components in the building. Let's say, say that Jacqueline was originally planning on a power vented natural gas water heater. But what would the house look like and how would it perform with the heat pump water heater? So we can take that component out, put the new component in and show Jacqueline and Kevin specifically the impact of that one component on the energy profile of the building down to the energy bill, the impact on the energy bill. So now they have solid, reliable information for which to make a decision. So Joe, you do this all the time. Mm -hmm. Give me an example of what Andy was just talking about. Well, when Andy was talking about the energy modeling that we do, what's, what's good about it and what's always been most valuable to both the building community and consumers is that we can take their house plan exactly the way they want it. We don't ever tell them to modify the plan run it through the software based on what the builder and the homeowners agreed to do as a starting point for the building itself. You know, the function of, of the building, the mechanicals, the insulation, windows, and so forth. And then we can shake it out. We always look at building models as being unique and having their own individual potential, similar to people. We all have similar parts, but we all have different potential. And we look at buildings the same way. So. We really like using the software to show people where the action is on the building they want to build with the current components they want to use because you have to have a starting point to make all other conditions you know, re, uh, comparable. So we like doing that. So managing expectations is one of the best features of the software. You, we can identify that up front. So it can give you a good estimate of what the utility bill is going to be. Mm -hmm. Let's say Jacqueline says, I want the house to be 25% more efficient sure. or 50% more efficient than sure. what the Wisconsin code is. Mm -hmm. How does the model then do that for you? Well, what we can do, and the way the software is set up, it's really excellent. We can run what's first called an energy cost and feature report based on what they gave us for plans and what they initially wanted to use for insulation, mechanicals. The only thing we have to estimate up front is the air tightness of the building. We can't get that off a of drawing, but we've got enough experience with over 50,000 homes that we've tested, so we've got a pretty good idea. What will happen then is it'll actually estimate the operating cost for heating, cooling, hot water, lights, and appliances. From there, the software can actually go to an action report like I have up in front of me here, and it'll take the heating bill and actually break it down in pecking order. Something has to be the largest contributor to the heating. Something has to be number two and number three. If you can't identify those up front from your fixed starting point, you might spend all kinds of money on items that are way down on the bottom of the list, having the least potential benefit, but adding a lot of cost to the building. So, Jacqueline, let's take a look at a model that's close to your home, and let's make some changes or see what we can see what the energy model can do. Yeah, I mean, for example, we're installing an air source heat pump, which is kind of pioneering in the Midwest. Um, so we want to make sure that the energy load on our house is as minimal as possible. So some of the things we toyed around with is adding insulation to the attic, to the exterior walls. We even asked our builder about going with two by six framing instead of two by four. So maybe we can give that a try. Sure. Sure. Should Should I run show this for you? us. Yeah, All that'd right. be great. Yeah. Well, right now, let's take a look and see what we have in there. Say the above grade walls, so we can pull up that library entry. This particular model, we have um, two by four framing with 16 inch on center framing with R15 in the cavity with an external one inch of foam at R5. So let's just say that we wanted to look at what would two by six insulation do 
with the R23 value for that 2x6 cavity with that R5 so that we can see what energy changes both on the load of the building and the operating cost. And we can do that real fast. So we just grab one of these, take the, go down to our library entry. The building load right now is 29,300 29, BTU per hour at design conditions. Let's see what changed. So now it knocked the load down a little bit and it reduced the heating cost maybe about 100 bucks. Total operating cost just a hair over 100 bucks a year. So this is why it's sort of interesting, right? Um, at some point on every building, you get to the point where there's not a lot left. And if someone doesn't do a reliable model to get started, it's real easy to say, well, let's keep going, let's keep going, let's keep going. Well, unless your wallet keeps going and keeps going and can go on, it might be a little bit of a problem. And Jacqueline, you and Kevin you went and talked to Tim O'Brien Homes, who's building your home, to see about if you can make it even more efficient, and you found out that? At some point, it didn't make sense. I mean, Tim O'Brien is already building um, a pretty energy efficient home for us, which is partially why we went with them. Mm -hmm. And we looked at these numbers that were crunched today, and we compared it to the price for the upgrade, and it, we just didn't get the payback that we wanted. But without the energy model, I, I really wouldn't have known what to do. I could have guessed, and I wouldn't have gotten the end result that I wanted. So, Jackie, how far above code is the house that you know, and then where do you want it to be? Yeah, good question. Um, Joe, can you show us? Sure. Let's take a look. <laughs> we'll run a little drum roll here, and we'll see what we have. Yeah. It's always the fun part. We get through the details of breaking down the uh, takeoffs on the plan. All right, right now, if I blow that up a little bit, right now we're showing it at 34.83% better than the uniform dwelling code right now, the way the building model is. Sure. Okay. And I, I think I'd like it to be a little higher if <laughs> okay. we can. All right, and did you have some ideas with that? Maybe close to 50? Well, let's see what happens. One of the bigger ones we're seeing uh, recently is uh, the heat pump water heater. Right now we have a conventional natural gas water heater in the file. Let's just flip it to put an air source heat pump in. So it's real easy with the software. We go back to the domestic hot water screen. We just tell it we want to change it to something else. So we go to our air source heat pump group. It's air source heat pump water heater. Right? Oh, and a heat pump water heater. There we go. Yeah. Keep an eye on me there, Andy. I got it. I got it. <laughs> All right. And this is good because we we definitely been yeah yeah so there thinking you can, we'll go with the water yeah heater. so there you can see I changed it I put in the uh, heat pump water heater and now we'll just ask it to run the numbers we were at thirty four point eight three percent better than code we'll go back to the focus new home report and now we got some now we got something happening now we're up at forty five point four five percent oh my gosh yeah, so what a difference a one item a ten percent yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Switching to a heat pump water heater is a game changer right now, and we have some additional incentives from Focus on Energy to do that. And I've been doing this for, for 13 years as a program manager, and this is the most substantial incentive that we've seen for for advancing technology in, in heat pump water heaters. It's a game changer. It can have a dramatic impact on the incentives that are available. In essence, the uh, energy model runs the show when you're building a new home. We like to think it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. It's a good analogy, Ron. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree with it. <laughs> Thank you both for showing showing us how this works. I mean, this is this You're is welcome. fantastic. You're very welcome. Now, Jacqueline, what's next for the house? I think it's uh, framing, right? Yeah, framing is going up. All right, so that'll be the next segment of uh, Friday Focus Five. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Ron Jordan with Focus on Energy. Make sure you hit subscribe and check out all the YouTube videos that we have here on Focus on Energy, and we will see you in about a month.